I love making this bracelet as a gift for myself, for anybody who I know loves texture. It captures everything that you want in every detail, a rubber stamp, a leaf, whatever it is you have on hand. Before I get started, I like to oil everything. My hands, my work surface, and my, my working tools, just so that the clay doesn't stick to my work surface or my tools while I'm working with it. I want it to stay where I want it to be. I'm gonna take the clay out of the package. I always like to keep it sealed up so it doesn't dry out. I'm just gonna condition it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna just put it between the cards. I'm gonna be rolling this out to a three card thickness to start. It's a great thickness to work with before adding my texture. I'm gonna just flip it as I work so that it's not giving me a hard time. And then once it's out to the three card thickness, I'm gonna move it over to the two cards and placing it on my texture. This is gonna give me texture on the back side of the bracelet. And I'm just gonna roll that out. Ooh, look how, see how that texture came right up? I'm just gonna take that right off my roller. And now I'm gonna move it over to my non-stick work surface, which will let me then do more work with the clay, guaranteeing it won't stick to anything. And then I love to just then go crazy with all of my rubber stamps. I use little ones, big ones. You can use whatever you have around. You can use the same texture sheet and just flip it over on top of the clay. And I had these drafting tools on hand. My husband's an architect. I had these drafting tools and like it just leaves this amazing detail. Look at that, look at those dots. Like they're just so cool. Once all of the texture's in place, I'm gonna cut the squares out that make up the bracelet. I'm just gonna take a simple clay cutter you can use any size. Just make sure when you adjust your size, you adjust the amount you need to make a full bracelet and just cut those out. And once they're cut out, I need to make the holes that I'll then later use to link the um, bracelet together with jump rings. And I'm just using a, a regular drinking straw, a little cocktail stirrer to make my holes. And then once I'm at this stage, I'm done for now. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to let sit aside and let it dry. You can put this in the dehydrator. You can just let it air dry. It doesn't take long because this is at a nice thin layer. Once it's dry, I'm going to go into all of those holes that I created, and I'm just going to take the jeweler's files and really get in there and make them nice and smooth because this is going to be a beautifully finished piece of jewelry, and you want all of your holes to be refined and really to the finish that this piece really deserves. And I'll take my salon board and I'll go around the edges. Now, because it, it's a square cutter, you want to round off your edges just a little. You want to maintain that square shape, but you want, don't want it to be sharp because it will be metal when it's fired and you just don't want it to be hurting anybody who might wear this piece. So I go around it and then as a finish, I like to use the polishing papers or the sandpaper at a higher grit and just make sure my surface is clean and always do the back as well. And just make sure everything is nice and smooth. Now it's time to fire. I'm going to get my safety glasses on. And I'm going to start up the torch. I'm going to ignite it. And get it going. The piece, as it starts to heat up, the binder will begin to burn off. You may see a little smoke and a flame. Then you want to work to get the piece up to a peachy salmon glow. If you have a hard time seeing that color, you'll want to dim the lights in your room takes a little bit to get it to there, but once it does, hit your timer, get it going for two and a half full minutes. You really want to make sure you hit that timer and get it to the right time so that you're sure your piece is fired correctly. Once you get there and you have your piece completely fired, it's time to burnish. You're going to take the wire brush and you're just going to go across the surface and bring up all of that metal, all of that shine. And you can leave it at a satin finish, or you can hit it with the burnishing tool and just burnish the surface until it's really, really, really shiny. Get up that real high polish. And to get it even further, you can use the paste. Use the jeweler's paste on the surface with an old t-shirt, little piece of a t-shirt, whatever you might have that's a lint-free cloth. Just rub it across the surface and it'll really bring up that mirror finish. Like you see in these pieces here. See how shiny these are? 
And then once you have them all assembled in the order that you like, you, you may, if you have time and you think about it, you may come up with a pattern that has to go in order. I tend to not think that way. <laughs> I like to mix it up. Uh, you're going to just start linking your jump rings. And I found these jump rings, and I use those in the center. So I'm linking my larger jump rings to the center jump ring like you see here. And you want to link as many as you need together to make a full bracelet that will go around your wrist. And you add a clasp to one end. I like to use a lobster. And you want to choose a size that's appropriate for you and for your piece. And then I also like to add a length of jump rings on the end just so that it's adjustable if it's not for me. Say if it's for my mom or for somebody else that you're making this for, for your mom. You might want to just add a couple extra jump rings so it's sure to fit. And just want to take a look at the finished pieces one more time so you can see the different ways that it can be completed. We have on the left, we have the satin finish. That's just done with the steel brush. And then these on the ends, the other two, the one in the middle and the one on the end, those have a liver sulfur finish to them to make them patina to make them look a little older and that gives you a lot more contrast between the depths of the texture and then the smooth surface finish. So whether you're making this piece for yourself, your sister, your grandmother, find a texture that works for them and make them a bracelet today.